All right, guys, testing out the Wonder Studios 3D compositing one button click. This is pretty much what we get inside. We get this fully rigged character. I mean, I'm not really into animation and like I don't really know a lot about I know some basic stuff. This this rig is, I guess, pretty insane and pretty detailed because I'm seeing we got all the finger rigging, the rigging you would ever need to, to make this character work. And then you got like some big movement stuff here from just looking at this. This character is fully rigged out, right? So I think you'll be OK to say you will need to go in and match his his textures. So I did have to go in and select his textures and the, it was pretty simple. This is basically like, OK, for the pants here, this was the pants. This was the tree for the pants. OK, and then it, I think there were TIFF files. Yeah, there were TIF, TIF files. Here was one for the pants and it had a huge saturation connected to it. Here was the roughness and it automatically had a. All right, guys, I got my beta testing for Wonder Studios. This is the result. I basically just quickly put something together really fast just because I wanted to see the results. And this is what I got. All right, guys, testing out the Wonder Studios 3D compositing one button click. Not bad, not great, you know, but awesome, right? Because again, all I did was just in import my video select the character and then boom this is what the results that i got let me quickly show you the, the before video all right guys testing out the wonder studios 3d compositing one button click it got most of the motion the head motion correct but for me the lip syncing was not the best all right guys testing out the wonder studios 3d compositing one button click facial expressions the eye the expressions that is point on like the head movement just the mouth was off. What I also did was I immediately wanted to break it down like and, and break down and see what I get. So this video is more about what you get from them. So I, I all the uh, the available options that I was able to get, I took. I basically got mocap file, which it has some mocap data in here. It's a FBX file for actors. So we can open that up inside of a blender. Then I also got this my project alpha mask. And then in this file here, we have the mask which is really cool, right? So, I mean, that is fantastic. And it's, they are in P, PNG sequences, right? We also had my blender scene, I'll blender stuff, basically the lighting. And then we had the clean plate. Okay, so here is the clean plate. You can see there, that was where I was and it took me out, which was, you know, I mean, it's the best it can be with AI. I mean, what it is, what it is, it looks okay, right? So that's the clean plate, we get that. And those are also, I chose P, uh, these are JPEGs. These were JPEG output. And then we also had the professor textures, which I had to download these separately. These weren't, uh, weren't part of the initial download. You had to go back to their website, choose your character, and then pull down his textures. So I brought those in. So let's go ahead and quickly jump inside a blender and see what the blender file looks like. So, you, you know, I went through each body part to make sure everything was connected. Of course, everything will be in pink, the hot pink if it wasn't connected right. So let me click on his face here. And it's the same thing here on his face. I think we had a little bit of subsurface going on here. If I also open up this one here. Now, look, we got a couple of little bit more nodes on this one here on the face. Uh, basic texture, color texture, connecting into a hue saturation which connects to a mix node, which goes into the base color. And then again, hue saturation control to really dial it in. And then a uh, subsurface here. So you see the subsurface color. This is also coming out of here into a subsurface. So we have a little bit of subsurface going on. Uh, roughness connects into the roughness. Oh, what was this one called? The skin texture SSS. Uh, okay, subsurface here again with the map range connected to with the multiply, right? So I didn't really tweak any of this stuff. I just kept everything the way it was because I just wanted to see what it was generally going to look like. And there's the same thing on there. So that's it for as far as basic the textures. You got to get the textures all connected. It's not already connected with the texture. So you will have to do that. Now, as far as the animation portion of it, we jump into here. Let me go to the animation tab and you can kind of see here. Let's go ahead and zoom in there. Now, uh, me, before I get in the animation, let me back up to the camera and we can see where is our camera here. Camera. Let's go ahead and look at the way this is all rigged out here on the side. As a matter of fact, I need this is default. It's already opened up like this. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and close it a little bit so we can see what we got inside here. OK, so we do have a couple of collections here at the top camera, which is already muted out. You can't see it. So I'm going to turn that on. Then we had camera sub, which is also turned off. And then I guess, is that my camera right there? That must be my camera. It must be super small. Can I hit scale? 
skill is not doing anything okay but that was basically uh what i would say muted okay so there is my camera you can see where the camera position was i really wasn't that close to my face with the camera I actually probably was because i was using the samsung note 8 to film that but it did get the position right so and then if i go ahead and hit play here you can see the movement from my the mocap of me catching me catching my uh you know my head and my face so we got that here then we got an object layer here which in the, inside this object layer we have cuts and then cuts c t uh c u t s here is looks like we got all the body parts so everything inside of here the full rig all the rigging face rigs um all kinds of stuff like i mean just endless stuff here like you got complete control like i said i'm not into animation i don't really know a lot about animation from seeing these sub things you got like control of everything here that you would need to basically get this can this character going let me jump into the okay here we go here's some animation here so let's go ahead and make this one full screen so you guys can kind of see this going what's going on here but look at this look at the keyframes check it out all the keyframes just i have no idea what i'm looking at because <laughs> I know some basic animation stuff, but this right here just rocked my world. Now I did look into it a little bit more because I was like, man, I want to get the mouth opening up more in, in like, you know, pronunciation. So I kind of just dug into it the first time. And then I did see here, let me see jawbone or is it jaw, like jaw lines. Okay. Here's that. And I could come in here and start making adjustments if I wanted that. And if I knew how, you know, I'll have to study up about animation but it's all here guys you got complete control like it's all right there absolutely fantastic okay so that's what's inside as far as fully at all the animation let me go ahead and close that one down and then we have one more here lights uh we are in cycles of course you have to be in cycles because that's what it was uh originally cooked in was cycles yep cycles gpu supported and um how come i'm not seeing anything I think I had this issue the first time I opened the file. I wasn't seeing anything. Let me come back, turn off sub camera, turn that on. Okay, yeah, this is real time. This is what we're gonna, like, I had this issue. There it is. It took, I guess it just takes a little bit of time. And then, okay, you can kind of see here, I, I guess I didn't, you know what? I ended, let me tell you first. This was the original file because I did reopen this because I had an issue. Like, I wanted to put my own lighting in there. I wanted to put like an HDR light in there, like the lighting to get it more precise. And it, I couldn't get figure out how to get these lights to work here. Like if I, I couldn't see them, first of all, if I go to lights, right? Scroll this down, I turn on light and then, okay, here, there's supposed to be a, a sun position. And I'm like, okay, where is the sun? Like, I don't see it. Where is it? I see the file here. If I scroll it down, sun position, sun cut. Here's another light, light two, light two, but the stuff is all grayed out. Okay, here's my son. Okay, I found it this time. There's my son, right? There's my son. Good. Okay, so light two, turn this on here. And there's another light. There's two sun position lights here. Okay, so we had two sunlight positions there. Let me go ahead and undo that just to put it back. So that was that. I guess I didn't really look too well because I was just so excited. I wanted to see the result. But long story short, I basically went into this file and I deconstructed it. I, like I copied it, the guy, just the, just the animation guy. And then I brought him into a separate whole new file because what I wanted to do, I wanted to just bring the character in and rebuild, recomp everything because I didn't like the way it looked in the original. I wanted to blend in a little bit more into the scene. Uh, what I ended up doing was, like I said, I opened up a whole new file and let me show you the, 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 way, the one that I rendered out. Okay, this is the one that I rebuilt and recomposited, tried to get the lighting a little bit more better added some light wrap onto him and just dialed the, the look in a little bit better added a little bit more blurry to background so this on the, the bottom here wouldn't be so noticeable where the clean plate clean plate went in that was my version right so and then i still messed up i forgot to to render it out at the proper frame rate i did 30 fps it should have i did 24 fps it should have been at 30 fps it looks a little bit more integrated compared to where is the original here's the original right you can clearly see he's just like just slapped into the scene there versus my version where i got you know a little bit of some soft edges here the light wrap was a little bit off on this one that's why i re-rendered it but i have a little light wrap and you know soft edging 
you know, try to just really try to get them in there, added some grain, added a little bit of color grading to it. And that was my version. Now, what I did, I, I, I had a problem. It was tough to try to rebuild it in the, the file scene that it gave me. So I literally just copy pasted the character out and brought him into a whole new blender scene and then took all the elements that I had because I had the background plate. I had the rotoscope plate and just recomposited everything inside of DaVinci Resolve. So let me quickly open up the blender file, my the new blender file that I did. All right, I'm having some issues with the blender file. It's not working for some reason. So I'm going to show you the, the comp here in DaVinci Resolve. So inside of here in DaVinci Resolve, you can see that I had two elements. I rendered out just the character here and I rendered him out in the EXR format. And then I also had the background clean plate already from Wonder Studio. So I jumped into the compositor, put them together. So if you look here, we have just here was my character. And then I added in a color space transform to turn him from linear to rec 709. And then you got the, the, the proper colors. Then I did a color correction onto him just to doll him up a little bit, get him to match in with the scene a little bit as far as the color wise. He was a little too saturated as far as my taste. And then from there, I also added in a blur note just to take the sharp edges off of him a little bit, give him a little bit of grungy softness here. On the background layer, on the background footage, I also added another blur just to blur that out a little bit to try to hide some of this, 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 this clean plate going on. I merged those together. Once you got those all merged together, I ended up adding on a light wrap. A light wrap was just to try to, you know, to take off the hard edge of him. I think I did it a little bit overdone. I overdid it a little bit on the light wrap, but you know, this was just a test, a quick comp. I literally comped this together in like 25 minutes. It wasn't trying to be like, you know, a final output. And then fi final output, this was the final output. I quickly jumped into the color grading tab, added on my Dehancer plugin with a film emulation, Kodak V3500. That was pretty much, this was like pretty much the final look here that we got. I go full screen. Final thoughts, like this is awesome, right? It's, it's I, I think it's not meant to be a one click wonder and be done. It's more of a, a tool to really help you get to that next. I mean, literally to get to that all, this really helped a lot, the whole process. And again, by me breaking everything down, like the, the you know, when they give you everything in sections and being able to put that together even more, that just helps you with the, the whole workflow. Literally like two hours, it took two and a half hours for me to, cook, to get to the final results of where I was at. Versus if I was to have to do that manually, tracking, mocap, masking, dude, it's going to take more than two hours, definitely. So this was just a game changer to just to knock out a lot of that bulk hard work and get it done, especially with the one man crew like me. This is game changer, right? This is really, really cool. And at the moment, I still don't have access to the camera tracking data like that. It was grayed out. That wasn't an option yet, which I really looking forward to that, because then if I just do some motion tracking, boom, throw that in, get my camera track, be done with it. That kind of actually kind of like kills my channel, right? Like I'm teaching you guys how to use the, the motion camera tracker and this thing's just going to do it for you. Like, <laughs> but oh, well, you know, technology is just, you know, it's just another tool I think that we can have in our bag. So if you guys are interested in more camera tracking stuff, take a look at this video here where I'm going to walk you through how to track vertical video. And I, it's more of a workflow and dealing with the issues that I have while I'm doing these type of tracks. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.